All right, what's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to be talking about our new regression rainbows. If you like this kind of quantitative technical analysis on the hex price, leave a thumbs up, be subscribed by the end of the video if you aren't already. Let's get to 2,600 subscribers, we're almost there. And let's talk about what do I mean when I say our new regression rainbows? Well, if you've been watching the channel for a while now, then you know that we had fit our curve originally to four clusters of data, right? So a lot of people had been plotting this line, which makes sense because it's been a line of support on a log scale for multiple years at this point. And so I thought it was a good idea to fit a, a simple line on a log chart with these four data points, right? And we touched it, since we touched it so nicely and bounced off of it and now we're far above it, I thought it would be fit, pun intended, to refit the data to include this data point as well as these. So that's exactly what we did. We went over here and it was actually a lot of work. Like, look at all this. I had to make a bunch of rainbows and you'll see what I'm talking about in a second. But I essentially added these two days, right? You can't really see it, but I added these two data points, which were effectively this right here, two days here. Um, the exact days, if you wanna know, was uh, were April 27th and April 28th of 2021 of this year. And so when we include that in our model, it actually changes everything. It changes everything a little bit, right? You effectively have the same model, but there are some things that are different and we'll go over that right now. Let me zoom in on this so you guys can see it a bit better. And you're not gonna understand this gibberish like whatever this is just for me to remember what i'm talking about but essentially our old slope here old m was approximately 0 0.011 and our new our new m is 0 0.0113 whereas the old one was 0 .00, 0 0.0119 if that doesn't make sense to you all, all you have to understand is that slope of this newly fit data got reduced by about five percent and this is the new regression rainbow and what do I mean by 5%? I mean, when we had our original regression rainbow, this new one simply tilts over by 5%. So the angle of the entire beam, right? The entire set of lines tilts over about 5% to the downside. And this starts talking about, this starts touching on the idea that we've been talking about here on the channel, which is this fit might not hold forever. I've talking about, I've talked about the fact that you know Ethereum held its exponential fit, so to speak, for its first three years. So I think for the first three years of Hex's existence, it makes sense. For example, the first thousand days or so to stay for price data to actually stay within here. I wouldn't be surprised if it stayed within here, literally until what what like end of next year. But we've talked about the fact that it won't hold it forever, and at some point it will break. And instead of having just right your straight beam on a log chart. It'll start bending over slightly, kind of like you see with uh, the Bitcoin and the Ethereum ones. And so it's it's interesting that we see the angle start bending over a little bit on our refit model. It, it makes sense, right? It it agrees with that. It it what's the word? It converges with that idea of diminishing returns over time. And so our our angle bent over by about five percent. And to accommodate for that, the actual coefficient, right? The multiplier out front uh, had to expand a little bit by I think about 30%. So all you really have to understand is that once we refit the data, the, it suggested that diminishing returns is slightly in play, okay? And when you refit it, you see that we, we've we had our two models, right? We have, if you go to lookinhex.com, we have our equidistant model as well as our Fibonacci space model. And so once we refit the curve for one, we refit it for the other one. So this is the Fibonacci one that we've been looking at. And so our extension from the fit is also uh, refit. And it's all updated on the website, by the way. So if you go to look into hex.com, these are actually updated with the newly fit data, right? And it's a lot cleaner. Like you actually see price touch this much more uh, nicely, right? doesn't deviate as far from it. For example, this one is only 1% beneath it, that low. This low is literally less than 1% above it. So this is clean, right? I like, I like how this is looking. 
by the way, code yellow on our Fibonacci space model. We have we are above the yellow. Um, but yeah, just we'll talk a bit more about that uh, later. But here's our equidistant model, which was our original model, right? Where instead of being Fibonacci spaced, they're just spaced by equal distances. And so red, green, and pink are the same on the equidistant and the Fibonacci. The only difference being the orange, yellow, cyan, and purple, which are spaced either, again, just equidistant. So you see this is nice and uh, symmetrical or Fibonacci spaced where it's just not symmetrical, but rather spaced by these uh, mathematically significant numbers. Again, the argument here is the Fibonacci rainbow is slightly more significant because it's your sort of trend-based Fib extension, I think. I digress. These are your updated models. If we look at, um, you know, it's updated on lookinhex.com. And we also updated our fair value models, right? So once we updated our regression rainbows, then our extension is slightly different. And I want to mention this, this idea that our previous max extension, that was this variable up here, uh, max extendo right here. It used to be around 24.7 because it was our maximum extension from our old fit. So it was at this point over here, right? It was at this point over here. And with the refit data, funny enough, it's less. So it used to be 24x or something extended from the fit. And now it's only 20.6x with the with this new model. And so because of that, this 20.6 number was what affected this over here. Because, the, okay, this green line, here, let's get into it, give me some context. This green line is the same green line as both of the regression rainbows. Remember I told you the the red, the pink, and the green were exactly the same across all of them. And so your green is your midline, right? This is your price. And we have our fair value, which all, all this fair value really does is it takes maximum extension from the fit here. It's basically an average of this white this white uh, curve. It's, it's literally just that. And I've plotted it on here before too, but it's basically an average of this white curve. And you know what? Let's just show you guys. Um, what it is, it'll just be your fair value extension because I do want you to see it. Probably should have had this ready for you, but here we are, fair value extension, just so you can get a better idea of what I'm talking about because I really do want you to understand. Here you go. Now it's plotted in purple here. So this is our, you can call it fair value extension. Um, yeah, fair, fair extension, you can call it. And it's effectively an average of this white curve. And you kind of see it now, right? And it, it held some significance where it kind of bounced off here nicely, bounced off here nicely, got rejected here, got rejected here, and now we're coming up to it again. So this is our fair value extension, which when you map it back up to the actual price chart, it, that purple curve is actually this pink dotted curve here. And so this could be your quote unquote fair value. So once we refit the data, this, got refit as well and puts our fair value currently at about 9.8 cents, which is pretty cool. And our midline is currently around the 12 cent region or so, which again, the fair value oscillates around the green curve super nicely. So I really, really like this chart. I've considered putting it on the website. So let me know what you guys think about that. I'm not too sure if I actually want to share, share that one, uh, but it would be something like, um, hanging out here on this page. And also, would you want to see, for example, if we added more charts here, for it to be two rows of three or two columns of three? Uh, I'm leaning more towards the two columns, so it just kind of keeps going like that. You know, it gets taller versus wider. Uh, yeah, I'll probably do that. But um, yeah, if we want to talk a little bit of the technical side, because that was, that, that was plenty of the uh, quantitative side. And oh yeah, here it is. I'm so silly. I had already plotted it, so there was no need to to do this really. But here it is, uh, much much cleaner. Where once again, we are pretty close to our fair fair extension, so to speak, and pretty close to our midline. But then again, we've also shot up above it by a lot in the past, 
which tells me that it's it's significant in the long term, I think, where you want to ask yourself, where should you be buying? Well, when you're really far beneath, say, your fair extension or your your fair value, it seems like a good idea. For example, when you're a fourth of it, it's probably a good idea. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Um, and maybe once you're like over here, uh, 20x extended above it, maybe it's a good time to uh, rethink just aping in. <laughs> so that's the quantitative side for you in this video. I do want to talk a little bit more about the technical side as well. And this, I, not idea, but the fact that we recovered from a recent dip quite nicely to where it just becomes this long wick. Again, I was watching it real time, similar to this one here on June 12th when we dumped to seven pennies. Well, today's had us dump all the way to eight pennies and it got bought right back up super quickly. And now we're right back at nine pennies, making this nice long wick, which is what I like to see. Long wicks to the downside are very powerful. It indicates a lot of buy pressure. And like Wales only, I believe was saying on one of his streams, all you have to do is look at certain indicators to see where the direction of the market is headed. Like where, where are the whales pushing this? In which direction? And if you look at a whale, for example, the one we oftentimes like to share here on this channel, our 0xAF friend, uh, also known as C5, then you look at just recently, their buys, again, they had doubled from 50 ether all the way to 100 ether, his uh, hex buys. And then recently, the one an hour ago is 160 ether. So he's ramping up his buys. That's what I like to see. How much did he get? About 4.6 million hex with that 160 ether. And now he's sitting pretty at 135 million hex in his wallet, over $12 million worth of hex and still chilling and sitting on 93,000 ether. And this is just one of his wallets. Uh, right, this is just one wallet, I should say. We don't know how many. Uh, oftentimes people have multiple wallets. And so there's about a quarter billion dollars just chilling in this wallet. That's what I like to see where whales are pushing this market. It's um, it's a bullish sign in my opinion. And you know what? A bonus if you're if you stuck around this long. Let's show you guys a little bonus. So if we look at our extension from our fit, I see something really interesting. Now that we've refit the data, right? What do I see? Well, our fractal, the fractal that we've been talking about for a while actually looks much, much nicer this time. I uh, recall that we, we had talked about the fact that we had bounced from the red up to the green and then came back down, came back up and hung out between the orange and the yellow. Over here, what happened was slightly different, but similar where we bounced from the red to the yellow, right? So one line lower. And then instead of bouncing right back up and consolidating between orange and yellow, what happened was this, right? Further move to the downside, more consolidation uh, between between here as opposed to here. It took much, much longer, about twice as long. And then we finally saw our bounce up to the yellow and our consolidation around the yellow. So this region over here is what I'm getting at. This region here looks a lot to me like this region over here, right? And it's even it's even bigger where this one didn't go straight to the red, although this one did. This peak right here didn't go above the yellow, this one did. So it seems like a much more powerful yet similar move to something over here, which leads me to believe, well, maybe this consolidation around this region is analogous to this consolidation around this region and could translate to something like seeing us break the yellow decisively like we did here and then continue on to higher levels. Again, you could argue Honestly, I think you could argue for the pink curve more now that we've refit the data uh, based on this fractal and the power of this move and the fact that supply dynamics are very different and we see sort of this pre-virality of hex in media. So this is pretty bullish in my opinion. If we see a fractal, if we see this fractal play out similarly or even identically and we were to go up to this pink region, we're looking at 20.6 extended from the red curve. Uh, so 20.6 over 3.39, what would that be? About a 6x from here, which if we're sitting at 9 cents, 
that puts us at around 55 cents. So the pink curve cur currently, excuse me, corresponds to, um, pink curve currently corresponds to 55 cents. And if you know about 55 cents, you know that it's 10,000 X from the bottom approximately. So that's pretty interesting. It's pretty interesting to say the least. And even if we just reach, you know, uh, purple, like we've argued in the past, that might happen if we just don't go as high as before. And you could argue, well, um, you know, there are arguments against it and for it. But if you went to, to red instead of pink, it'd be about half of what we just said. So closer to 28 cents, maybe 30 cents as opposed to, cause this is moving up too, as opposed to, you know, 55 cents. That's something to keep in mind, right? Once you see, when you see here flat, you don't realize uh, immediately, you might not realize that these curves are actually moving up on a, on a price, on a price scale. So even though pink is currently around 55 cents, like I was saying, it's just constantly moving up as are the rest of these curves. And with a slightly less steep angle by about 5% than our original um, regression rainbows. So I thought it was a good title, right? Because I was I was considering refitting the data, refitting the curve, but none of that really popped. And I realized like just new is a good marketing word. So new regression rainbows might might get more clicks. I'm not sure. Uh, let me know what you guys think about this. I think that's everything I wanted to cover in this video. The fact that our regression rainbows have been updated refitted to new data, not only on my end, but on your end as well. And we have whales buying up the price. Things look good with this wick. And we are sitting still at number five on Nomics, only about a 10% move away from being number four. So appreciate you watching. If you enjoy this kind of quantitative, technical, statistical hybrid analysis on the hex charts, leave a thumbs up, be subscribed and help me get to 2,600 subscribers. Let's smash right through it. I appreciate you watching once again, and I'll catch you in tomorrow's video. Peace.